All right, well, the next book that I read was The Kamigawa Food Detectives by Hisashi Kashiwai. First published in Japan in 2013, The Kamigawa Food Detectives became a bestseller. The English translation was translated by Jesse Kirkwood and released in February 2024. A sequel, The Restaurant of Lost Recipes, will be published in English in October 2024. Hisashi Kashiwai was born in 1952 and raised in Kyoto. He graduated from Osaka Dental University, but after graduating, returned to Kyoto and worked as a dentist and then as a writer, often highlighting Kyoto. So this was a quick turnaround. Yes, on this one. that was surprising. I was really shocked. That was that. surprising. <laughs> I bought it last week, or I picked it up last week, and I read it last week. Um, I actually finished it this morning, in fact, because wow. I realized I had just a little left, and I was like, I can finish this before the book uh, before the book club, <laughs> before books on down. Mm. Um, uh, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> uh oh! Can I do that as my review? Uh, uh. Yeah. All right, I wrote some lists. Things I liked. Okay. The food. There was a lot of great descriptions of food. All were in the, like, with their Japanese names. Mm. And I looked up a bunch of things because I just don't know that much about Japanese cuisine. Um, and so I would, like, look things up. And it was really, I felt like I was really immersing myself in this, in this food, in this cuisine that I didn't know much about. So mm. that was really cool. Kyoto, thought that was really cool. Um, most of the Japanese books that I read are definitely set in Tokyo, yeah. which is interesting because if most of the books people read about Canada were set in Toronto, I'd be like, ah, that's it's cool. I like Toronto yeah. enough, but it's just one city. Like there's so much diversity yes. throughout what Canada is and all these different types of stories. So it was great to set something that was like so proudly set in Kyoto. Mm -hmm. Like it was like kind of making a point to bring up like, well, that's not the Kyoto way. Yeah. <laughs> As you know, we always do this at the end of our meals. And I was like, Oh, All right, okay. okay. <laughs> um, so I thought that was really cool. And it made me want, it definitely made me want to visit there. When, when I went to Tokyo, um, in 2018, the, I went for a conference and the person who kind of at like, got me to come and organized my trip and everything who worked with the conference and everything. He was from Kyoto. Oh, nice. And when I met him, he was so friendly, so friendly. When I met him, he gave me a box of cookies that he had bought in Kyoto for Aww. me. And I was like, thank you so much. That is so amazing. And he explained to me that they're made in this like really famous bakery in Kyoto. And I was like, oh, <laughs> wow and i tried the cookies and they were much basically for uh this i'm sure this is not exactly right but they were basically matcha shortbread like mm. that's the closest i can explain what they were yeah they're like matcha shortbread unbelievably good like <laughs> like christ next level holy like, wow wow yes. i remember just like i ate one and i was like <laughs> I was like already depressed that I only had 20 more, you know, I'm like, no, <laughs> they're going to run out one day. <laughs> oh no. They were so good. Um, and so since then, since eating that little cookie, I've wanted to go to Kyoto and this book, I was like, yeah, I would, I really would love to go to Kyoto. Um, and then the third thing on my list of things I liked was kind of the thesis statement of the book. Mm. I, I felt like the heart of the book was food is emotional for people. Mm. And it was a nice exploration of that. So I guess I haven't talked about what the book is. Basically, it's a father and his daughter mm -hmm. who run a really nondescript restaurant. It's kind of shabby. It doesn't have a sign. It, it's like you could walk past it and not know it was a restaurant. But they are a restaurant and kind of more especially they are a little detective agency mm -hmm. that will help you find a meal from your past, anything that you want. So we have, is it five or six? I think it's six different people. Yeah, it's six different people who come into the shop in, in order, not at the same time, in order, okay. very like serialized. One comes in and it's a woman who wants to recapture this one meal she ate when she was five years old. Okay. And 
they, she sits down with the daughter and the daughter asks her a bunch of questions, try and get clues about how they could track this down. And then they always have two weeks to try and replicate the meal. And then two weeks later, the person comes back to the restaurant, eats the food, is blown away by how accurate and delicious it is. And it impacts them so much and reminds them of this time in their life, mm -hmm. thanks them, leaves. And then it's the next chapter and we do it all again. So the thesis of that, like food matters and food makes you emotional and flavor, uh, that is a beautiful theme and it's super true. And I, I think there are a lot of people who like are foodies and like are really into food and they're very aware of this. But I think also a lot of people uh, maybe take food and those flavors and those homemade recipes for granted. Mm, yeah. And this really touched on like, a person who went through a divorce and really misses her ex-husband and they got divorced for like a really sad reason. Um, and she wants to get that meal back that she loved that he made or someone whose mom passed away when he was really young and she used to make this meal for him and she want, he wants to try those flavors again. Mm -hmm. And what the detectives do is they will like go on a big hunt to the little town where he's from oh, yeah. and talk to the locals and everything. So I love that thesis, but on the flip side of that, all of that happens off the page. So basically like the person will come in, have that initial interview, ask a lot of questions, answer a lot of questions. And then it will like have a little cute picture of a ramen bowl. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then it will be when they come back to the shop two oh. weeks later. Oh. So we don't actually get to see the two people doing the, well, it's the dad that does it. He's like an ex detective. He used to be a police officer and now he's like yeah. doing this special side gig, but he, we never get to see him out on mm. the field. And I'm like, wait, that, that would have been vastly more interesting yeah. as opposed to later on. He's just like, yeah, so I went to your town and I ran into this guy and he told me that your mom used to buy fish here. And then you're like, I would have, that's a, like a perfect example of show <laughs> don't tell. Like so true. Yeah. The whole book is him just telling you the detective work he did as opposed to you following on the adventure. Oh man. So I felt really um, detached from it the whole time mm -hmm. and I felt like um it was also just very repetitive I was so just thinking that because yeah moving into things I yeah. didn't like repetitive it felt like just it it just was the same thing over and over again person comes in tells you the details comes back two weeks later tries the food loves it do that again right and again and again yeah, you know what's gonna happen at least six times yeah so it, it just got to a point where I was like this is a I'm a little bored. The second thing I didn't like was kind of the food because, because we didn't get to go on the journey to find that specific ingredient or understand, like I, we didn't get descriptions of, of what the market was like where he bought it or whatever. It just sometimes felt like a list of the food. Yeah. So like, while I liked the, the food descriptions, there came a point where I was like, you can't tell me more about mackerel. I don't, I don't, ha I don't know. Like I, I'm, it's too much. It was too many little things. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the next thing, which, cause when I finished it, Connor was like, what did you think? And I was like, I made the same sound that I made to you. I guess I was like, eh. and he was like three out of five. I was like three out of five. Like it, I didn't hate it. I finished it. I didn't yeah. DNF it. Yeah. I, and I enjoyed spending time in Japan. Like that, that's why I, one of the reasons that I really enjoy reading Japanese literature, because yeah, you're like, Oh God, it's so cool to spend some time there. But he was like, would it have taken much for it to be a four out of five? And I was like, actually, no. Hmm. And I was thinking about this. I think that this book could have been so much stronger if the frame narrative was more satisfying and interesting yeah. because you don't, we don't like have much character um, development from the detectives, from the dad and the daughter. Okay. Very little happens with them. And there's like this like li little reference to this customer who's constantly there and you're like, oh, okay, it seems like the daughter and him have a flirtation going on. Mm -hmm. That's never really developed. Mm. The dad uh, lost his wife and misses her and is talking about like, when is the right time to remarry? 
that doesn't really develop in, into anything. Oh, so the main characters like, aren't really characters. <laughs> that's exactly it. The main characters aren't really characters. Mm-hmm. They're kind of just like vessels for the other characters. Right. And I was like, if you had made their stories really good and like I had gotten to learn, because otherwise, if you don't do that, otherwise it just feels like six little stories. Yeah. It doesn't feel like there's an arc of any kind. It doesn't feel like any progress was made. Right. At the end of the book, the main characters are in the exact same position that they were in at the beginning of the book. Yeah, that's boring. You know? It was boring. So uh, things to mention. This is my final list. <laughs> the cat. You asked me, is the cat yeah. actually in the book? He is in the book. Okay. His name is Drowsy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Love that. Um, he's not important to the plot in any way, but he is consistently in it. Like he okay. is, um, he kind of just sits at the front of the restaurant and everyone has a little moment with him as they walk into the restaurant. And okay. They're tr- constantly trying to shoo the cat away. So yeah. it is, he is in the book. My other final note for this book was that it didn't feel like the right format. I was thinking that while reading it. I was like, I feel like maybe this is supposed to be like serialized in a newspaper. Like if oh, just okay. every month I read another story from the Kamigawa food detectives. I'd yeah, be things like, that like can cute. be independent from each other because the main characters yeah. don't really have an arc. It is kind of just exactly. like a, Yeah, I see or what you're saying. Or if it was a comic strip or Ooh. if it was like a sitcom where like every episode yeah. somebody new comes right. in and we do like that would have been a little bit better. I actually don't feel that a novel form was the best right. format for this book. Very interesting. And that is my review of the Kamogawa Food Detectives. 